Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the third and final installment in the Nexus lineup for 2014. This is the Nexus 6. So we're already taking a look at the Nexus 9 and the Nexus Player, but now it's time for the grand finale, the big Nexus 6 smartphone launching with Android 5.0 or Lollipop, which is a major redesign of Android. So we're going to take a close look at that in this video. Now this is a flagship phone with flagship pricing. So off contract, this is $649 for 32 gigs or $700 for 64 gigs. Now we also have top end flagship specs here. We have a Snapdragon 805 clocked at 2.7 gigahertz. We have an Adreno 420 GPU. We have 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs or 64 gigs of internal storage, no micro SD card slot to expand storage. We also have front facing stereo speakers and a fairly large 3220 milliamp hour battery which is identical to the Note 4. This phone also has a huge 5.96 inch AMOLED display with quad HD resolution. So that's 1440 by 2560, good for 493 pixels per inch. So that's a lot of pixels. We also have a 13 megapixel camera on the back capable of 4K video recording with optical image stabilization and a dual LED ring flash that surrounds it. All right, so let's go ahead and crack into our box here. The packaging, again, is very similar to the Nexus 9 and the Nexus Player. So let's go ahead and slice open our packaging here. There we go, there is our Nexus 6, which is quite large. Now you can see it looks like it's a black phone, but actually this is the cloud white version. There is a midnight blue version as well. So if I flip it over, you'll see that cloud white back panel, which also has a lighter silvery trim around it. So this is a nice metal frame. Again, the design is very similar to the Moto X, which I also reviewed. Now this is a polyurethane or plastic material, which has a rigid feel to it, but it does have a nice texture, a nice smooth texture. We're going to take a close look at this phone in this video, but first let's get the plastic off the front here. All right, just pull it off. And there we go. All right, let's set that aside for just a moment so we can take a look at the contents of this box here. So first up is our Nexus literature packet. So we pull this open here. So we have a Nexus 6 quick start guide with that red theme, very nice. And then you also have your SIM ejection tool here. So we can just pop that out if you want to eject your SIM. There we go. Again, very similar to other Motorola products. And then we have our safety warranty guide, which is gray, which means it's less interesting, right? Now taking a look at our accessories, we have our very large turbo power supply. So this is that turbo charger that also comes with other Motorola devices lately. We just need to peel off this little plastic cover here. And you can see that nice glossy finish with the Motorola dimple toward the center and the USB port on the bottom. So again, this is a turbo charger. 15 minutes of charge will give you six hours of additional battery life on this phone. So again, a nice quick charger that works only with this supplied USB cable. All right, so let's go ahead and boot this up for the first time. Just gonna tap and hold the power button along the right side, which is toward the middle here, which makes it a little more reachable. We also have our volume controls just below that. Now we can see that the bezels surrounding this large display are quite small, which keeps the phone nice and compact despite its large display. Although you can see they're not quite symmetrical. The lower chin is about half the size of the upper chin here. Now as you can see on the bottom, we have our on-screen Android keys, but when you bring up an app, those black out. So you now have a more symmetrical display. So it looks like this design was intentional. Now toward the top, we have our earpiece, which acts as one of the front-facing stereo speakers. We also have a two megapixel front-facing camera, good for 1080p HD video. And then right next to that in the shadows are all these sensors, the proximity sensor, the ambient light sensor, and that sort of thing. What you're missing here are the IR LED sensors that are available on the Moto X and the other Motorola products launched this year, which read the presence of your face and the presence of your hand to activate ambient display mode. Down below, we'll find the other front-facing stereo speaker, which also incorporates one of the microphones. Now, just like the Moto X, these grill pieces are raised, which means that when you place the phone flat on a table, you won't muffle the speakers. It also helps to keep the glass off a table so you don't scratch it. Also, like the Moto X, we have a curved glass edge, which makes it feel really nice when you swipe across the screen. Now, what you're missing here is an ambient light sensor, just like on the other Motorola device and that's because this phone also incorporates ambient display, which means when you handle the phone, it wakes up the display to show you your most recent notifications. Now the Nexus 6 does this a little differently. So instead of having badges with brief text at the top, you have your entire notification panel right on your lock screen just grayed out. So it saves battery life. This is much more informative and when you tap on the screen, it lights up for you and you can swipe to unlock it to see your notification. Now on the back we have a plastic material which has a nice texture to it. It's not what I would describe as soft touch, but it does have a nice silky feel to it. We have our Nexus branding toward the center, which is chromed, looks very nice. We also have that classic, although more subtle Motorola dimple toward the center. This is much more prominent on the Moto X, but of course you can see your Motorola logo sort of stamped in the middle. 
Now, just like the Moto X, we also have a 13 megapixel camera on the back with a ring LED flash. So basically, there is a reflector that surrounds these double LEDs which surround the camera, which gives you a more even fill flash. Now, the difference here is that this camera has optical image stabilization, which the Moto X does not have. Now, at the top, you can see this prominent piece of metal, which is part of the metal frame, which gives us a really rigid feel. And of course, you can see we have these antenna insulators on either side because the frame does integrate the antenna. Now, at the center, you'll find your headphone jack, and then you'll find your nano SIM tray, which you can eject and install your own SIM. Now, the great thing about this phone is that it's a truly universal phone, meaning you can stick a Verizon SIM, Sprint, T-Mobile, AT&T, and it works the same. All I have to do is make sure your carrier registers the IMEI. So that's unusual, especially in the US. Now, along the right side, you'll find your sleep-wake power button along with a volume rocker. Now, that sleep-wake power button does have a texture to it so you can distinguish between the two buttons, even though they're next to each other. Now, toward the tapered bottom, you'll find a microphone and at the bottom you'll find a micro USB 2.0 charging port and as you can see here again all that metal construction along with these antenna insulators at each corner. Now if you look at the phone in profile you can see that classic Motorola shape. So you can see it's thicker toward the top, thinner toward the bottom, it's also thinner at the corners. So it kind of slopes around and fits nice and comfortably in your hand. Now like the Nexus 4, 5 and 7 this does support wireless charging and it is compatible with the Nexus charger but it is kind of hard to position exactly right. But you want to position it somewhere around the Nexus badge. That's where the charging receiver is. But of course wireless charging is going to be much slower than the turbo charger that comes with the device. So the other big story with the Nexus 6 is Android 5.0 or Lollipop. So this is one of the launch devices. So one of the great things about uh, Lollipop is the new lock screen which shows you all your notifications and as you can see here you can scroll through it to expand those notifications as you can see here they continue down and they stack on top of each other which is a kind of a nice effect here and as you can see here when you drop all the way down you get to your quick settings toggles such as a brightness slider here you can see your battery status you can jump to your settings or jump to one of your profiles date and time you can also see these quick toggles for rotation lock bluetooth wi-fi and that sort of thing we also have a quick access toggle for a flashlight which is very handy to have so again all of that is available from the lock screen. So I can tap on one of these to launch right into that app or I can expand the notification here to see more of my messages and again I can dismiss it by swiping to the right. I can tap on it to launch into the app. Again let's go back and then you can see I can tap and hold on that item to see which app is pushing it and I have options here so I can tap on settings. It takes me to my settings panel for that app or I can tap on this and get to information. So with information, I can block notifications or I can change the priority of the notifications. Now, if you look at these notifications, you can see the top five first, and then you have all these other notifications just below it. Now, if you look at their notifications, they're here chronologically, and you can see all the other notifications that are also available here. So you can see those badges and you can see how many more notifications we have pending. So all I have to do is swipe down to see the rest of them. Now, if you scroll down here, you can see that we have this card dedicated to Google Now notification. So that's a separate area toward the bottom here. And then you have a clear all button here to wipe out all your notifications. This also means you can directly act upon apps on the lock screen. So for example, if you expand out this notification, I can archive it or reply to this email. Now, I really like the way some of these notification panels behave when you scroll through it. So for example, you have your media player up here and when you scroll up, it stays persistent but collapses for you. So kind of nice here. And then when you bring it back down, it expands back out. So it's pretty nice. Now to launch one of these apps, all you do is double tap on it and it takes you right to that app. Now you can see at the bottom we have this pulsating lock button so we can swipe up to unlock our device but you can also launch quickly into your camera app just by swiping left or you can launch into the phone dialer by swiping right. So from the home screen you can see we can swipe right to see our Google Now launcher and then you can tap and hold on the home screen to edit this. So you can change your wallpaper, add new widgets. If we take a look at our widget panel you can see they've also updated that as well. You can also jump to your settings which allows you to turn off Google Now if you prefer and change some other settings. Now I also have my drop down notification sheet here. As you can see I've cleared out most of my notifications and I can swipe down again to get my quick settings. Now when you adjust the brightness slider here the drop down sheet disappears momentarily. When you release it it comes right back. So you no longer have to leave the drop down shade in order to control some of these settings which is really nice. Now I can also use a two finger gesture to jump to quick settings right away. Now we also have quick access to multi user mode. So you can see I'm currently logged in but you can use a guest mode here. Now guest mode basically logs you out, creates a separate space for that user 
And uh, what they can do here is log in with their own account. They can adjust the wallpaper. They can take their own photographs, all without affecting your account. So you can see it's basically returned to the default setup here. So it's even returned to the default brightness here, which is too dark here. But again, you can see this is all their own apps. In order to use them, they would have to log in with their own account. So again, they don't mess with yours. Alternatively, you can add a new permanent user to this phone. So basically, they'll go through the same setup process with this phone as you went through when you set up the device for the first time. So they'll be asked to log in, set up the Wi-Fi network, and that sort of thing. You can also manage the accounts under more settings, and this is where you can delete them. Now you can see I've already moved in here and added some of my apps, but if you go to the app drawer, you can see most of the apps here are just Google apps. So they're stock Google apps and they have all been updated for Android 5.0. Now one of the updates is the change to email. So the email app is now integrated into Gmail. So if we go to the Gmail app here, you can see this now integrates IMAP accounts. So you can see I've added my Gmail accounts and my IMAP account. So if I go to add accounts, you can see I can add an IMAP or pop account as well as an exchange account if I want. We also have a new default messaging app, which is in independent of Google's Hangouts app. But this is a standalone Android app. It's not cross-platform. It's a much simpler app. You no longer need to log in with your Google account. Now, personally, I prefer Hangouts as my default SMS app. So I'm going to set this up under Settings, select SMS, select SMS, disabled, and click Yes. And now that is my default messaging app. And of course, I can move this out of the way and add Hangouts. We also have our new updated Android key. So we have our home button, which you can swipe up on to get to Google Now. We also have our recent app switcher, which introduces overview. So you can see all your open tabs or apps or that sort of thing, all in one sort of accordion view. And they're all stacked on top of each other. And you can see they're really quick to cycle through here. So if you want to get to something you want to access again, just tap on it, it brings it right forward. Of course, you can also swipe them out of the way to dismiss them like so. Now some apps like Chrome will actually allow you to see each individual tab as a separate window which you can access from the overview feature here. So for example you can see a tab for The Verge, you can see another tab here for USA Today, you can see another tab here for Autoblog and etc. Personally I'm not sure I like this just because they're in chronological order so each tab is kind of stacked behind different apps and sometimes it can be kind of hard to sort through here. So you can see I have these other tabs back here, I have another tab right there, another tab right there. So it can get a little confusing to sort through. Now, similar to Moto X, you can control this device hands-free, but you have to enable it under settings. Right now, you have to be able to see this search bar in order to command the device. But if you want to be able to do this from the lock state or from anywhere on the device, you can enable it under Google Now. So what we're going to do here is go to settings. We're going to go to voice. Now, the next thing I'm looking for is detection here. I'm not going to speak the phrase because it'll wake it up. But you can see I can toggle on all these options. So I can select always on so it responds to your voice, whether the screen is on or off. You can also enable this when the screen is locked. OK, Google. Play Dead Mouse. Playing Dead Mouse. So as you can see, it's basically like having that Star Trek-like computer where you can place this phone anywhere in the room and command it from a distance. We also have enhanced Android Wear integration with some really neat features. So if you launch the camera app and you have an Android Wear device connected, it will detect the presence of the camera app and will launch a shutter release utility. So basically what will happen is you have an app on your watch that acts as a shutter release. And you can place your phone anywhere you want, but basically when you tap that shutter release, it takes the photograph after a countdown and then will display that photograph on your watch. And if you want to regain access to the shutter release button, just swipe to the right. We also have some enhanced security features. So if we go the settings, go to security, go to our screen lock. You can see what's available, swipe, pattern, pin, or password. Right now I have swipe, but let me go ahead and enter in a pin here, and we're going to show you exactly what's new here. So for example, if you restart your device or if you power it down, you can enable the ability to require a pin to start the device. Now as you can see, when I swipe up here, I'm not prompted to enter in my passcode, and that's because I have an Android Wear device connected using Smart Lock. So if you add a new Bluetooth devices, you're prompted to enable Smart Lock. So so trusted Bluetooth devices like an Android Wear smartwatch or your Bluetooth in your car will bypass the lock screen. So I can enter in my password here just to authorize this device as a trusted device and I can add them. So you can see I've added my car, I've added my watch, and I can add additional trusted devices either from Bluetooth or NFC. Now if you want to bypass smart lock, just tap the lock button and your device is locked until you manually unlock it. So now when you swipe up, you have to enter in your PIN. And of course, smart lock will not work if Bluetooth or NFC 
are turned off. So I've turned off Bluetooth here. So if I go to unlock my device now, you can see I have to enter in my pin. Next up, let's go to our settings panel, which has been updated with search. So we can just start searching for things like screen. So if we start typing in screen, you can see cast screen, display, uh, brightness level, etc. So you can see lots of search results right away and you can tap on them to jump right to that settings panel. Now you can see we have our Wi-Fi settings, pretty standard stuff. You can turn Wi-Fi on and off. You can see the available networks. You can also see your Bluetooth settings, so you can add new devices or manage your existing devices. So for example, under sync, I have several options here because this is an in-car system. You also have your data usage information by app, which is nice. Under more, you'll find things like your default SMS app. You can see there's two to pick from right now. If I tap on this, you can see Hangouts and the standard Messenger app, so you can manage that here as well. You also have NFC, which you can toggle on and off, Android Beam, Tethering, and Portal hotspot, VPN, cellular networks, and emergency broadcast settings. Under display, you'll find adaptive brightness, which is on by default. It's not accessible from this drop-down shade here. You can just change the brightness, but you can't toggle adaptive brightness on and off, so you have to go here to find it. Now, under sound and notifications, you'll find independent controls for media, alarm, and ring volumes, as well as vibrate for calls, interruption settings, phone ringtones, and that sort of thing. Now, when you press the volume button, of course, you can control your volume, and you can now control your do not disturb features, which is really nice on stock. Android. So you can see right now I'm receiving all notifications, but I can also select priority notifications. So here I can select whether I'm receiving all events and reminders, phone calls or messages, and I can toggle those on and off. And I can also adjust these and set specific days and specific times of day in which this automatically activates. Alternatively, I can select indefinitely or for 15 minutes all the way up to eight hours. So it will automatically turn off after a period of time. Or I can select none, so I'll receive no notifications at all, and I can also limit that by time. Under storage, you can see how much space is taken up and what's taken up all that space, including other accounts that are using your device. Under battery, we can see our complete battery history, so you can see your timeline and see what's taken up all your battery life. Alternatively, you can also go up here to enable battery saver mode and modify those settings. So you can turn on right now. So in battery saver mode, you can see dials back screen brightness, CPU performance, and data performance. So you can see we now have these orange bars that are omnipresent here. This just reminds you that you're in battery saver mode. You can also turn on battery saver mode automatically when the battery is down to 5% or 15% or never. Never is set by default. We also have our application manager so we can see our downloaded apps and how much space they're taking up. You can see all your running apps and how much system resources each app is taking. And then you can also see all your apps. Under users, this is where you can add new users or remove the ones you do not want. You also have tap and pay in here as well thanks to NFC. We also have our location settings, which you can toggle on and off. We also have security, and this is where you can manage smart lock. So this is where you can add additional devices or permit certain devices for smart lock. Smart lock also includes trusted face. So there is face recognition in here. So we can go ahead and set this up. Basically, what's going to do is bring up the camera, and it wants to map your face here. So let me see if I can do this on camera. All right, so I had to do this off screen, but it got it. So let me show you how this works. So if you look down here, you can see it's scanning for your face and it does it really quickly. So again, pay attention to that lock button at the bottom. Again, scanning, unlock. So it found your face right away and you can unlock it without entering your passcode. Now, if it can't find your face as I'm hiding behind the camera right now, so it can't find it, you're gonna have to enter in your passcode manually. Also under security, we'll find our screen pinning, which we can turn on and off. So what will happen here is that once you have this on, if you go to your overview, you can see that we now have this pinning icon available under each app. So you really have to bring the app forward if you want to pin that app. So now you can see this pin icon, I can tap it, and it locks to this specific app. So that means the user cannot escape this app. They can only interact with this specific app. So this works particularly well with the phone dial if you hand your phone off to somebody who wants to make a quick phone call. Now if you want to get away from this, all you have to do is tap and hold these two buttons and your screen is now unpinned and you're good to go. And of course, under About This Phone, we have Android 5.0. If you keep tapping on it, you'll find the lollipop Easter egg. If you tap on that, it'll just change its colors. If you tap and hold on it, you get to a Flappy Bird themed game. All right, I got one. That's good. See if I can get to, nope. All right, that's good enough. Now, the great thing about the Nexus 6 is that it has these loud front-facing stereo speakers, which sound great. So what I'm going to do here is play a sample video and compare it to the standard bearer in this segment, the HTC One M8, which also has excellent HTC boom sound front-facing stereo speakers.
Hey guys, Mike here at the Detroit Borg with a look at Google's Nexus Player and the optional gamepad. These products are produced by ASUS and are powered by Android TV. Hey guys, Mike here at the Detroit Borg with a look at Google's Nexus Player and the optional gamepad. These products are produced by ASUS and are powered by Android TV. Although the Nexus 6 is louder than the HTC One M8, it's not quite as clear and tends to distort at higher volumes. Now, obviously, the big story here is that display, 5.96 inches, which sounds bigger than it is. That's because the phone itself is pretty compact relative to its screen size. We have pretty small bezels. But the screen shrinks down quite a bit when you're using certain apps because of the on-screen Android keys, which take up quite a bit of space. So when you compare this to something like the Note 4, which has a smaller display, you can see that display looks a bit bigger because it has off-screen Android keys. But like a lot of Motorola displays, this one is kind of pink, kind of a warm color compared to other ones like the Note 4. Four. It's also kind of on the dim side compared to something like the iPhone 6. The iPhone 6 Plus is definitely one of my favorite displays out there because it is really bright. Taking a look at our Geekbench 3 scores, you can see the Nexus 6 scores about the same as the Note 4 and Note Edge. The Note Edge is what I have right here, but they have the same spec. The same Snapdragon processor, same 3 gigs of RAM, same graphics processor. You can see that the iPhone 6 Plus does better with a single core score, but not as good with a multi-core score. Now compared to the Nexus 5, this is a fairly modest gain, which is kind of interesting. And that may have something to do with the QHD resolution versus the 1080p resolution here. Now, because we have a high-end processor running stock Android, this is highly optimized, so the system runs really quickly, really smoothly, especially with Android 5.0, which is pretty graphically intensive. So we have those nice transitions, and everything moves very smooth with a high frame rate. And that's particularly impressive with a QHD display because there's a lot more pixels to push here, so performance really keeps up here. I'm really impressed overall. Now, there are occasions when things tend to lag and stutter here and there, but they are sporadic and kind of hard to predict. Now, of course, that may improve over time with further software updates. Now, the camera app is pretty basic. You snap your photograph, you can see you get a little animation indicating that the gallery is to the right, so you can swipe in to get to the gallery and swipe through your images or videos and swipe back to get back to the camera. Now, you can also pinch in and out to zoom in on your scene here. And as you can see, you get a little animation that follows your fingers. And of course, you can swipe in from the left to get to your modes. So you have video mode, lens blur, uh, panorama and photosphere. Now lens blur is kind of interesting here, so let me show you how this works. So you snap your photograph, and you basically tilt the phone up while snapping the photograph. Now if you swipe over to your gallery, you can see it's processing the image. So this will allow us to refocus the image after it's taken. The idea here is to focus the subject in the foreground and blur the background to give you some depth of field. Now I can tap this icon to change focus. So I can tap anywhere on the scene to focus on the subject or the background, or I can use this little slider. Now getting back to the standard camera mode, we can go up here to see our available options. So we can switch between the front facing and rear facing camera like so. You can cycle between your flash settings, auto on or off. You can also see that we have HDR plus. If we enable HDR plus, you no longer have options with the flash. You also have your grid lines, which you can turn on and off, and then you have your timer. Now this took me a moment to figure out, but you have to be able to see your modes before you can access your settings for those modes. So for example, this is where you would change your resolution quality. So you can see that 13 megapixels is uh, four by three, but if you want widescreen, you'll have to go with one of the other lesser resolutions like 16 by nine, which is at 9.7 megapixels. We also have our front camera, which is 2.1 megapixels. I thought it was 2.0, so it's 2.1 megapixels, 16 by nine or four by three. You also have your video modes. So we do have 4K video recording as well as 1080p or 720p. Now, when you select 4K, it stays on 4K. We also have our front facing camera, again, 1080p or less. And then you have other options like panorama resolution and lens blur options. Now, all cameras should have this little nanny here, which reminds you to rotate your phone to landscape orientation before you start recording or taking photographs. Now, while you're recording video, of course, you can pinch in and out to zoom and you can snap photos. All you have to do is tap the screen. Now you have continuous autofocus with this camera, so it automatically focuses it for you, so you do lose the ability to tap to focus. Now in terms of camera quality, I'm pretty impressed overall. We have 13 megapixels to work with, so you do get really sharp images. Color reproduction is pretty good, and it does a pretty good job exposing scenes. Low light performance is surprisingly good. That's thanks to the optical image stabilization in this camera, which means it's able to take really sharp shots at nighttime. This works especially well with HDR+. So HDR Plus produces really amazing results. I'll have some examples on the screen so you can see for yourself. So I'm really impressed overall with some of those software features. And with optical image stabilization, 4K video recording is really smooth. So I can walk around with my dogs, they're pulling on the leashes and yanking the phone out of my hand, but it still does a nice job balancing it really well. 
Now this camera does feature continuous autofocus, which can be quite slow and intrusive. So it's slow to respond and then spends a lot of time hunting around trying to find focus. This is worse in low light conditions. So I find that if you're taking photographs in low light, it spends a lot of time trying to find focus. So this isn't the right camera to choose if you want to get those quick snapshots. Now that dual LED flash system does provide a lot of even light around your subject. So it does minimize shadows. A lot of the cameras place the LED flash to the side or to the angle of the camera, which means you get a lot more shadow. But unfortunately, that also means you usually get more red eye. Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the front-facing camera of the Nexus 6. Again, this is 2.1 megapixels, good for 1080p HD video. And as you can see here, I have a lot of light sources going on. I have a light coming in from the window right next to me. I have these big light boxes behind me. And it's doing a fairly decent job compensating without being too intrusive. So pretty solid camera overall, and audio pickup is really good. So overall, I'm pretty impressed by the Nexus 6 thanks to its large screen size with a high resolution QHD display with that AMOLED technology, which gives you vivid colors and deep blacks. You also have excellent speakers, one of the best speaker systems you can get on the phone right now. It's a little shy of the HTC M8, but they're really loud and clear. We also have pretty decent cameras, a 13 megapixel camera on the back with optical image stabilization, which delivers really excellent results and a really decent front facing camera as well. And then you have fairly decent battery life. I'm able to get about four, four and a half hours out of this phone at maximum brightness. That's strict on-screen time. But of course, you're going to see less performance when you're using the device day to day. I'm also really impressed by the design and materials they've used. This is by far the best Nexus device I've ever owned with that nice rigid metal frame and that curved glass display, at least curved along the edges, which gives you a really nice feeling phone in the hand. Now with the tapered edges and the smooth back panel, it is a little slippery to handle. So you may want to add a case to make it a little more grippable. But the big story here and the reason to buy this phone is Android 5.0 or Lollipop, which is an excellent smooth operating system that looks really sharp. That comes with a lot of nice features. So the combination of great hardware and great software makes this a great phone and I think it's worth the price. So that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.